Joining me this morning is uh, the Managing Director of NTV Uganda, Agnes Asimwe Konde. We've only referred to her here as uh, Aggie. Good morning. Good morning, Joel. For starters, what is it like running a Brobding Nation company like this one? <laughs> It's fun because you get to be grilled by employees. Who else does that? <laughs> I hope I'll be safe after this, but uh, good to have you in the big story. Thank you. First off, everybody's asking, um, NTV is meant to be giving out news, informing people, entertaining them, educating them. And uh, previously, it's politicians that are paid for opinion polls to be done. They want to gauge their support. How are they doing on the ground and so on? But we commissioned this poll. We paid for it together with uh, another group of people. Why did we do this? Well, for starters, I actually do not agree that politicians should be able to invest in polls mm. because results of a poll should be independently commissioned, uh, first of all, for the study to be believable, and obviously because the parameters that you look at when you're commissioning the poll are dependent on the different variables that are in, that are in society. So if a politician commissions a poll, they'll probably be looking out for particular issues that they are interested in. Mm. But when an independent media house, as NTV does commission a poll, we are primarily concerned about what are the issues that citizens are concerned about, number one. What is the temperature at the moment in terms of who are they likely to be voting for if the election was today? And what are the things that could change that position that was defined at the time when the study was conducted? So I think this is the reason why media houses should actually be, in, should be interested in commissioning research because it informs the rest of the information that you share to the public for the rest of the electoral period. We just thought it's important to clear this too because you'll hear undertones, people talking surreptitiously out there saying, wait a minute, New Vision did a poll not too long ago and uh, it showed the president having a stupendous level of support. Mm -hmm. And uh, this that we commissioned is putting him at about 55%. And so people out there quietly tell us, but you people, who are you for? And well, we say we are for the Ugandan public, but uh, what would you say be about that? Well, I, I think it's, it's more of the subconscious feeling that people really share mm. than the conscious feeling. Because if you really, I would ask Ugandans how many have actually read the study. You know, we asked over 150 questions. And if you narrow down the whole study to just one, one question, mm. it really waters down the whole rationale of why a study. So it would be important, and I think the reason, the other reason why we would do studies, to understand what are the different things that are informing that position. And a study done, <coughs> in July and a study done in August will automatically be very different because a poll it can be equated to an audit. If today we audited your life, Joel, what would we find? Hmm. If question. we audited your life three <laughs> months down the road, what hmm. would we find? So a poll is simply a status quo of a situation and very many variables can change that situation. So that is what we need to track to be able to understand if a person comes into office, what were the factors that changed that win? And document that process. Because the, the irony of our country is that most of these things are not documented. So if you're going to even refer back to the last three, four, five elections, is where do you go to pick statistics that can inform you on what changed the game plan? Nowhere. You see, like you say, um, the focus has been on one or two questions that uh, raise a bit of dust politically. But there's a couple of other things that we asked, especially the concerns of people. And people are telling us, look, we want to see politicians address unemployment, address health issues, address the education sector. There's challenges there, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did get results, interesting ones. People saying, yes. look, these are issues that are biting on the ground. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for a media house like us? Does that mean that uh, since we now know that people have these concerns besides the politics and the hula baloo, does it mean that maybe that's going to change the way we run our stories, the way we do some of our programming that maybe will begin to highlight some of these issues, the challenges in the health sector, in the education sector, unemployment, with the view that the powers that we will do something about it. Correct. I think it's, it's twofold. Yes, correct. It's, I think being able to understand the issues that concern the public is, is very important, but also too for the politicians that are going to be writing out their manifestos, making sure that their manifestos are relevant to the issues that are on the ground is equally important. So this study is not really meant to be read as a one-off that, you know, NTV did a study and this was the result then. If, if I was a political party, if I was, you know, any, any policy maker, if I was anybody that is really concerned about this country, I would be asking for more details than, you know, simply just dwelling on one, two question and dismissing the poll as, oh, you know, this and that. There are very many issues that Ugandans are passionate about. 
and nobody is providing serious solutions to those issues. Or those that are providing serious solutions to the issues, they are probably not highlighted very well by either the media or on, all the other parties that disseminate that information. So yes, in terms of content direction, again, those results would be able to inform our editors and our journalists in terms of what are the issues that are important so that that then informs our rundown of our content. I've met people who tell me that, Joel, look, you people did a poll. You did not ask me because um, our sample space was 2,320. Yes. And, uh, well, I do have a statistical background, so I know for a fact you don't need to ask every one of the 34.5 million Ugandans out there, but many person out there feel, wait a minute, NTV, you always come to us. You get an affair and so on. But when it came to this poll, looks like you went to particular people to ask, you know, how was this done? I know that's a technical question, but... Uh, being the perspicacious lady, you, I'm sure you would have an answer for that too. <laughs> Obviously. Re research is, again, one of those things that is scientifically selected. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a population, a voting population of about 15 million people. The study was only conducted on t about 2,300 people, and it was randomly selected. So out of every one million people, probably one person would have been selected to, to make it to that sample. Mm -hmm. So what is the chance that you would make it? Then you go further and say, so if you are in Kampala, which places in Kampala will you go to randomly select? And then also there are certain things that also are, can be able to throw you out. For example, if we know that you work in the media, you probably will be disqualified from that study. Mm. Because your view of, of the country and your view of the issues is highly informed by a lot of information that you focus on. Does that not make so, it a biased No, 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 it if doesn't. The, the, the sampling was randomly selected across the country. Mm. But again, you, you still have to then go and break it down by age, by social class, by location, by, by everything. So now all those parameters might disfavor you but you know i think this is the start of a good process because polls should be something that we do all the time the question is affordability the question is also the public beginning to consume the content and understanding why a poll is important at a, at a certain point in time so if you are not in this sample out of the 2300 the next time we go out probably you'll be part of that sample so that should not be the basis for you to say that poll is in inaccurate just because you're not part of the sample it's interesting you talk about a next time and uh, some people have been asking me is there going to be a next time because there were the circumstances were different when this poll was carried out for starters that's the time that uh, former premier mama babazi had been arrested that's the time when uh, the fdc campaigns for flag bearer had just begun and so one would think maybe that would skew the poll a certain way and so people were asking when are we going to have another poll so that you know because things keep changing and with politics anything can happen what is today will be totally different maybe tomorrow. But I think just starting from where you start, I think that probably would have not surprised many people. Mm. Because if you go out to ask who would you vote for today, at a point in time when candidates have not, when parties have not even confirmed who will be their flag bearer, and you begin to see certain names popping out, and you begin to see even people who, have, who do not have any party to represent standing out, what does that mean for you? It's a baseline study. It's a baseline study which means that we should be able to track that result. So we begin to see the dynamics that change that result. So one month down the road, we could see a different result altogether. Three months down the road, we could see a totally different result altogether. So this is really just a dipstick. Mm -hmm. And users or consumers of that information should take it in that regard, rather than be extremely offensive. And offensive comes from a position where if a result does not favor you, Joel, your first subconscious instinct will be to say it is not accurate. And this has not only happened with polls, it happens with, with audience surveys, it happens mm. with popularity contests. I mean, to do, themselves. Yes, you know, so if today I conducted a study on, on radio personalities and said who is the most popular, I'm sure number one would not complain, but everybody else would say this is not accurate. So mm. this is the whole, the, the, the dynamics of really poor results. How do we change this? Because I get the feeling that maybe we need to get people a lot more acquainted to these things called polls, how they are done, you know, that I will get 2,000 people and they will be representative of three point, I mean, 34.5 million people and so on. Do we plan on doing that so that we get people to understand these are the dynamics. This is why it's even important to do these polls because again, some will say that, look, when you conduct a poll like this, you are influencing people who, for example, if my candidate was one that got 4% mm -hmm. and now I realize my candidate got 4%, then I'm not even going to vote because I think will not make it after all. You know, the other ones have made it already. And so some people feel we are already influencing, you know, the way things will happen for that matter. But my thinking is maybe we need to do a lot more in helping them understand this is why it's important. This is how it's carried out. And these 
this you know these details authenticate the polls mm -hmm. i think i think we've got a role to play in that regard as a media outlet that you know seeks to inform uh, our publics and you know make them quality publics obviously this is one reason why we did the poll and i think it's not going to stop here it's probably going to be something that we will do but then the public being able to accept and actually interpret poll results mm. for what they are and they take out a proper reading is where i would like to see this conversation going in terms of how do we better the quality of interpretation but also participation because you know some people will tell you that if you ask me today who i will vote because of fear or this i probably will tell you one candidate while the actual intention is different so in a poll you're able to actually understand that you're able to take that reading and say if you were to vote today because you ask multiple questions that double check the answer you know, because like I mentioned, there are a couple of questions. So you're able to take that, then you can competently say that this result has got an accuracy level of plus or minus 3%. Meaning, obviously, there's a likelihood that it can change, mm. but even if it changed at 3%, what is the, how impactful will that be to the total result? And therefore, it's a journey we're going to walk. We will work with our publics. We should probably be able to disseminate that information. I think we haven't disseminated enough of the other questions that we asked because there are some very interesting questions like how many MPs would come back. Mm. A very surprising result. I mean, where the electorate tells you that over 53% of the MPs will not return. That bothers me. And we saw that high attrition anyway previously. It, it, previously. I mean, if you have a very solid president who they're saying, yes, is going to come back, then he's got the majority of the members of parliament in parliament, but then f over 50% of them are not coming back. What does that tell you? In my preamble, I said that numbers don't lie, and indeed they don't. <laughs> but previously, maybe they have. Um, <laughs> in the UK, for example, it's one of those countries that uh, maybe we aspire to be like, hopefully, even better. In 2002, they carried out polls, and uh, it's interesting, the results after elections were a different story altogether. This year, they did, result, they did opinion polls, and uh, many an opinion poll out there was saying that uh, the Conservatives and the Labour, Labour Party were neck to neck, and a plethora of other opinion polls said that actually, the Labour Party was going to win when the results did come out. The Conservatives had won. They got 36.9%, and the uh, Labour Party garnered 30%, and everybody was in shock. What happened? In fact, they are quibbling, and they plan to hold a meeting to try and understand what went wrong. Was it a problem with the poll, or is it that our respondents were disingenuous? They did not tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. And so some people are saying, couldn't something resemblant to that happen to not just this poll, but uh, several others that we might do? That we might do. Well, like I mentioned, there are so many research methodologies that you can apply to be able to qualify one poll. One poll in isolation is not enough to tell you what is likely to happen. A couple of polls are good enough because then you can be able to take the, the mean, the average mean of across the polls because you begin to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. And like you said, numbers don't lie. When you're looking for a pattern, you're going to see what did this poll say, what did that poll say, what did that poll say, and therefore what is the average mean? And what is the likelihood that this result will happen? But then in, in other markets, they have things like expert judgments where you get, you know, uh, expert panelists like mm -hmm. political scientists, like journalists that are really highly informed who then go into the issues and begin to dissect them further and then give you another indication or a focus to what's likely to happen so yes it can happen depending on the issues on the ground but then the different methodologies whether we're talking about quantitative models or whatever can be able to eliminate that error and give you absolute clarity so when you look at all the other polls actually they've been able to give you accuracy of up to 86 percent in other countries and even our own election in 2011, I think mm -hmm. some of the polls that we had done, we were able to predict that result. So if people again want to cause change, and if I had more, the majority of people complaining about this poll, really look at the numbers and see who is voting. And do they actually buy into your thinking? Do they believe that it's time for change now? So if you want to cause change, take the result and go and implement something on the ground that is likely to change that result. But don't sit back and just say, oh, we've got popular vote, popular vote. Then when it comes to an election, you say, oh, it was rigged. So this is simply a status quo of a situation. And as media outlets, it's our mandate mm. to be able to inform our publics on what are the issues and how are they shaping up. And then, of course, enable our journalists to be able to shape that conversation in a manner that will help our country become a better place to live in. Finally, as we wrap this up, uh, oftentimes I'm asked this question, what makes us tick? 
And um, sometimes I don't know how to answer it. Sometimes I try to be humble. But since I have <laughs> the person who runs this place, uh, I'll not do an opinion poll because if I ask you what the number one station is, the result would be a biased one. But um, what makes this station take, you think? Well, let me start with your last question. Actually, if numbers don't lie, if mm -hmm. you look at the last audience research, NTV Uganda has got 41% market share of this country, undisputed. Again, numbers don't lie. But obviously, people will tell you that you probably they watch other TVs based on what they consume, and they think that is the standard. So what makes this place tick, I think it's a couple, three things. First of all, the people to the quality of our products and our processes. And then obviously, ultimately, all of that is, is synced on the pulse of our viewer. Mm -hmm. I think investments in things like this research that tells us what's actually on the ground defines why NTV can do that and why we will consistently do that. Because we've got to resonate with our viewer and with our stakeholders, so then we become the preferred or the leading number one TV. It's an old adage that uh, when fish is to rot, it starts from the head. <laughs> and uh, also when you want to test whether or not fish is good, you check the head. Clearly this fish is good, <laughs> the head must be good. Agnes Asimwe Konde, MD, NTV Uganda, pleasure. Thanks Thank so much you for talking to us this John. morning. You're welcome. Coming up is my opinion. A U.S. congressman once said that you are entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And maybe that's what opinion polls are. Many a time they reflect the facts that are on ground. So when you hear people out there throwing salvos and lambasting an opinion poll like this, I think you probably need to think again, look at the nitty gritty of it. That will probably help you to style up. If you are at 4%, you are at 1%. Try and find out. Why are you at the level at which you are? Maybe if you tweak things a little bit, things could change. And uh, like we have said here, that opinion polls are prognosticated things and they change along the way. Probably because people on whom these polls were done, the results eventually influenced them to do things differently. And I think that's the direction this discussion needs to take. So let's keep watching. Many other opinion polls will be coming up. Keep glued and we'll be helping you understand why we do them, but most importantly, how they are conducted and um, why it is important that even you, the citizenry out there, get to be a part of this and that you ingest these that we give to you. That will do for the big story this morning. Many thanks for joining us. Coming up in a bit is Everyday Life.